Hey guys, today we're gonna to be trying some new makeup. I'm really excited for so many of these products. I did get the new Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin uh, Blurring Balm Powder. I got it in the shade one. Um, I also have the Tom Ford Soleil Sheer Cheek Duo. This is the new one in the shade number two, Eclat Nude, and or new, excuse me, NU. And <laughs> I've been meaning to include this in a trying new makeup video for weeks now and I kept forgetting it. Sitting out on my desk, I kept forgetting to bring it into my filming area. I finally remembered. So we're gonna be playing with that. Um, I have the new Say Concealer. This was just released, I think this past Monday. So excited to try that. Um, I also have some new Pi Skin Care um, Liquid Bronzer and Liquid Highlight. So we'll play with those as well. We just have so much new stuff. And I also got a lovely box from Sisley. This um, contains all of their new liquid eyeshadows. So we're gonna play with those. And I also got a box from Hourglass, which contains their new uh, like lip product. I think it's like a, like a moisturizing, juicy, glossy kind of like lipstick. Um, and their new eyeliners. So I'm really excited to try all of these things. So we're gonna be applying this stuff. I'm gonna be swatching all the different shades of all the different things that I have. Um, so I've already gone ahead and applied primer, uh, which is the Chantecai Ultra Sun Primer and the Clé de Peau Radiant Cream Foundation in B10. So I've put those on since I don't have new uh, a new primer, new foundation. Um, and I wanted to jump right into the Danessa Myrick's uh, Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder. So, uh, when I first saw this product, I was so excited because I thought, what is this? It sounds so interesting. And it actually reminded me of a YSL product that came out years ago. And it came in this like light pink rectangular compact. And when you open it up, it had this balm, like a pan of balm that was light pink in color. And it was this kind of universal product where you could use it as powder, you could use it to set down things, you could use it as a primer, you could use it um, to like blur fine lines, blur pores, et cetera, et cetera. But that was completely like transparent. It didn't have any uh, color to it. So the Danessa Myricks, uh, this yummy skin blurring balm powder, there is one like, um, I think she calls it universal. Yeah, I think it's like a universal shade, which is actually shadeless. There's like no color to it. And then she has a whole bunch of shades. So I went ahead and got uh, shade number one. And because I have dry skin, um, I didn't think I would use this as a primer or a foundation. Um, this is meant to have like a very natural matte finish. And I think if you have uh, an oilier skin type, using this as a primer or foundation is probably a bit more ideal. Um, but because I have dry skin, I just didn't think I would use it that way. So for me, I think I would use it to set down foundation. I would use it to blur. Um, I would use it you know, as concealer because there is some tint to it. Maybe I'll use it as um, concealer. I won't use it as concealer today because I do have the new Say, but um, I do have like larger pores in this area, kind of like underneath my under eye, just this area, I think that's very common, um, these larger pores, and I do get shiny in this area as well, down my nose, like kind of between my brows. So I think I'm just gonna apply it there. And I have already gone in to kind of play around with the texture. So it's very firm in the pan. It's not like, um, like putty, where you're gonna like press your finger in there. You're just gonna kind of run it over. It's very balmy. And here is what that looks like on my finger. And if I hold my finger up long enough, you'll actually see it start to mattify. Do you see the shine kind of disappear? But what's interesting is the uh, feeling of this balm powder, it doesn't change. It's not like it starts to feel dry as it starts to look like it's mattifying. It feels exactly the same. So it's very, very, slippy it's very slick it's just really really interesting so yeah i'm i'm just gonna go ahead i'm gonna pick up just a little bit more and i'm gonna press some onto this area i keep talking about so i have larger pores there and you can see there's a little bit of coverage there as well i think this shade number one works for me i think if i were to use this as a foundation maybe it'd be a little bit too light but for my purposes, I think this is fine. So, oh wow. Yeah, it definitely does a nice job blurring. And I like this level of mattifying. It doesn't look super dry at all. It just gives it kind of like a dulled out satin finish. 
So here it is applied. Let me scoot in. Here it is applied and here it is without. And yeah, my pores over here look much larger than over here. That's really cool. Okay. And it's sitting on top of my uh, foundation really nicely. I wasn't sure if it was gonna, you know, sometimes things like ball up when you start layering, but no, no balling or anything. Really cool. Okay, I still have some left on this finger, so I'm gonna go ahead and press that on this side. Wow, I'm so not a lefty. <laughs> this feels really awkward. How neat. And this number one shade really does a nice job like kind of brightening this whole area, which is nice. I'm also gonna pick some up and apply to the tip of my nose, which is uh, kind of like the, the oiliest part of my face. So I'm just gonna apply some there because this is supposed to also help like shine and um, you know control oils throughout the day. So that'll really be helpful. And then like between my brows, that gets pretty shiny too. Wow, this definitely has uh, more pigmentation than I was expecting. Not good or bad, just different than what I had in mind because I really was thinking it was just kind of gonna be this balm. Um, but there really is some nice uh, pigmentation. I really feel like it has lightened up wherever I've placed it, like down my nose and over here. You can even see like my under eyes look kind of dark because I haven't gone in with concealer yet but that my, yeah, my under eyes look a little bit dark because I placed it down here. So I think if you do want to use it as foundation, you'll actually get some decent coverage. Oh, really nice. And great, great timing because now that the weather is warm, I definitely get a little oilier in my T-zone. Maybe I'll put some down here on my chin too. All right, well, definitely a very, very interesting product. And so far, so good. I'm really, really liking how it's blurred my pores there. Very nice. Okay, Danessa Myricks. And she's got a couple of videos up on her YouTube channel, like how to use it and what it's meant for, even though it feels like it is like multi, multi-purpose, very, very versatile. It's really just about experimenting and figuring out how it best works for you. So anyway, that is the yummy skin. Uh, let's go ahead and play with the new Say concealers. So they sent me shades HB1 and HB2. So here are the two shades. Actually, let me show you without the labeling there. So this is HB1, this is HB2. So HB1 is lighter, it also looks cooler, and HB2 looks a little bit more neutral. I think it really is gonna depend on how much coverage there is. If it's a very light coverage, I think one may work for me. If it's a really, really heavy coverage, this is just gonna look real pasty under my eyes. Let's see if it says anything on the box. Sheer brightening under eye concealer. Hide your beam. Okay, well, let's try the one under one eye. So we've got, oh, like a pointy, like cone-shaped doe foot applicator. Very nice. Just going to... Dot some underneath my eyes there. And I'm just gonna use a clean finger and blend that in. I definitely see it in relation to this eye without it, but it really is very natural. This is a very, very kind of like lightweight concealer. I think if you're looking for like a really high coverage concealer, I don't think this is the one for you. This is just, like it says, this is just like a brightening under eye concealer. Very, very light. I like that though. You know, in the summertime, I really go with like my base products. I really like to go lighter. So this is another product, like the Danessa Myricks, like really, really good timing. Okay, so that is one, which I think is actually really, really good. Um, a good match for me because it does not have a lot of pigmentation, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try HB2, just so you guys can see what this one looks like underneath my eyes. I think you can already see that it's like much peachier and deeper. It has a really nice texture too. It's just, it's lightweight all around. The texture, the coverage, everything about this is very lightweight. Yeah, this one almost looks like it doesn't do much because it's so similar to my actual skin tone where this one actually does some brightening, HB1, actually does some brightening. All right, so this will probably be better later on in the season if I do end up getting a little bit of 
color from these warmer months from the stronger sun. But yeah, but right now I like this HB1. So I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of this to this eye. Nice. Okay, yeah, that's great. If you're looking for like a lightweight, kind of easy breezy sort of concealer, this one is, uh, this one's good so far and it's not like emphasizing lines or anything. Yeah, it looks really nice. It looks uh, creamy. It looks like very, very creamy underneath my eyes. Okay, next, Pi. They sent over their new Impossible Glow uh, Hyaluronic Acid and Sea Kelp Bronzing Drops and Highlighting Drops. So I've got one bronzing drops and I don't think there's any shade to this. I think this is the only one. And this is what it looks like. Shake before use, okay. And it says, add to moisturizer and apply to face. For more intensity, apply directly to skin. Well, let's see what we are dealing with here. So let me just drop one drop here. So this also has a very lightweight texture. And this is very, <laughs> this was just that one drop. This does seem very concentrated. I wonder if I can just apply a little bit off of a brush, off of the back of my hand. Yeah, let's try that. I've got my uh, Units 303 brush, and I'm just gonna pick just a little bit up off the back of my hand and see, actually I'm not really, I'm not picking up much here. Oh, there we go. I can tell from like the back of my hand that it sets down almost like yeah, it seems pretty budge proof. I don't think I need to work quickly with it though. I feel like it stayed emollient for a while there. Let me try my finger. I don't think I like, I don't know if it was that brush or brushes in general, but let me just try applying this here because it looks kind of patchy right here. And I think that's from the brush. Interesting, it looks so copper on the back of my hand and it looks like it's got this really bright sheen, but when I put it on my cheek, I don't know, maybe it's the lighting, it doesn't seem that highlighty, it doesn't seem that reflect metallic. Um, and also the tone of it looks more um, red versus like copper. Hmm. I wonder if this is gonna be one of those products that's just better, kind of like mixed in, like it said, mixed in with like moisturizer and just applied all over your face for like an all over glow. I don't know if this is working out that well, for me at least, as uh, like a bronzer. Let me just even things up on this side. Okay, it did add some nice like color to my face. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to try it again as like an, an additive to either my foundation or a moisturizer or primer or something, just to see if I want, you know, when I want like an all over glow. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do with the highlights, because I've got two of the highlights here, uh, kind of the same situation with the dropper, I think what I'm gonna do is actually add it over powder and see how that works. So I don't have a new powder, do I? No, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my Say Airset uh, loose powder here. And just apply, I'm actually trying to focus the powder not where I put the blurring powder, which was here and then my nose area, because I do want to see how that, um, that blurring balm powder from Danessa Myricks, like how that works all on its own. Oh, I'm actually getting really sweaty on the tip of my nose. There's actually like little droplets there. I don't feel that warm. Oh, interesting, hold on. Let me just dab that off. And before we go into those highlights, I do wanna use this Tom Ford Sheer Cheek Duo. And there's two shades in here. I don't know if this top one is meant to be a highlight. I don't think so. I think these are just two actual like blush colors. And this is a baked gelée formula and there's no like sheen or anything to these. They just have like a bit of a soft appearance, I think because of the formula, not too powdery. So I'm gonna use my Refer 24 brush because this is a baked uh, product. I wanna use like a denser natural haired brush. I think, you know, by looking at these swatches, I think if you're going for cool toned, if you're going for warm toned, I don't really know what I'm going for. So why don't I just go ahead and use the top one, the warmer 
peachier one. That's very pretty, and there's more to it than I thought. When I saw this in the pan, I was like, wow, that's really pale. But yeah, it actually ends up being like a really nice peachy blush. Oh, that's pretty. Um, I'm gonna try the pink now. Let me wipe this brush off. Let me go into the pink. Let's see how much brighter this one is. Yeah, this one is just, yeah, just brighter. Brighter, pinker than the other one. This one is more subdued, more warmer, peachy in tone. And they both applied over that uh, Danessa Myricks Balm. Applied very nicely over that. Didn't interfere with that either. I really like this blush duo. I have to admit, I like it more than I thought I would looking at it. I was like, oh, <laughs> they were a little boring, a little, I don't know, uninspired when I first opened it up. But yeah, I really like like the level of pigmentation. I like the difference, that there's actually a difference between the two. And they apply really nicely. Yeah, very nice, okay, awesome. Now back to these pie drops. Let's see, so there's a rose gold, which is this one, and then there's a champagne, which is this one. Okay, so here's a swatch of the rose gold, and then here's a swatch of the champagne. I think because they're both so reflective, it's hard to tell. The rose gold is, it's not even that a uh, cool toned. It's more neutral. This one is just um, warmer and has a bit more yellow in it than the rose gold. So I think I'm gonna go for the rose gold. I don't think the champagne is gonna work that well with my skin tone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, drop a little bit on the back of my hand here. And I'm going to use my finger and just tap, tap some on here. So interesting, just like the bronzer, they start out so intense, as you can see, like by that shine, but once you start working it in, really quite subtle, which is nice for me. I like that. I like how subtle it is, but it is, I think, quite a difference from like the impression you're given when you first uh, swatch it. I'm sure you can build it up. Let's see. Yeah, and they definitely set down, so I would do like one cheek at a time and I would work, you know, fairly quickly. Yeah, so far I like um, the highlighter more than the bronzer. I think the bronzer I definitely have to add into something because, you know, with highlight, I'm just putting it in a very small area. Bronzer, I feel like I'm, in putting, I'm putting in such a larger area on my face that it's, I feel like it's hard to kind of like pat something in like that and get it even and also before it like sets down. So yeah, with the highlight, I feel comfortable using it just right out of the dropper. And for the bronzer, I'm gonna definitely play around with that and like add it into something for like a base product. Really pretty though, really kind of like nice, like natural kind of glow there. Ooh, lovely. Okay, for brows, you guys know that I've been enjoying the Westman Atelier Bone Brow. I purchased it in the shade Slate, um, but they just sent it to me in the shade in a different shade, so I wanted to try it, Bark. Uh, so Slate, I think, is uh, closer to kind of a, like a deeper gray, and Bark, I think, is like a dark brown. So let me go ahead and swatch both for you so you can check out the difference here. Oh, this is hard. Hard to swatch <laughs> eyebrow pencils because they're so faint, hold on. Yeah, the Bark is just a little bit more brown. So here is Slate, and this one is Bark. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell the difference, but take my word for it. This one is just like the teensiest bit more brown, a little bit warmer than Slate. Okay, so I'm gonna try Bark today. All right, so there is Bone Brow in, no, no nothing. So natural, I really, really love the effect of this pencil. It's very, very powdery, which I like. All right, well now that Bark is applied, I really can't see that much of a difference between Bark and Slate actually applied. I feel like these are gonna be very interchangeable for me. Okay, and now for eyes, let's go ahead and open up this uh, Sisley box here. I just got this when I came back from my trip and I just opened it just to see what was in here and I got so excited. Um, 
I didn't get to read up on it. Okay, so these are the Ombre Eclat Liquid Collection. The soft and velvety texture of the new Ombre Eclat Liquid Collection is lightweight and ultra comfortable, making it easy to apply and work with. The shades can be worn alone in a wash over the lid or blended together and layered as desired for subtle, buildable coverage. Rich, silky formula. Let's see, eight hours of transfer-proof long wear. There's a foam tip applicator. Can be applied with fingers or a brush. Okay, so these are the six shades. Very pretty. There's a few in there that look very similar, like number four and number three, the two in the middle, actually. Number four, number three, coral and pink gold. But we'll have to take a look and see. So they were kind enough in sending me all six shades here. So let me get them out of the box and, um, you know, swatch for you. All right, so here are the six shades. Starting with the lightest one, we have champagne. Then we have copper. Then we have pink gold. Then we have coral. Then we have bronze, and then we have wild. Now, champagne, the first shade, coral, number four, and wild, this last one. These all have a shimmery finish with a sparkling, ultra-luminous effect. And then shades number two and three, copper and pink gold, and bronze, number five, these all have a satiny finish. It's an iridescent, pearlescent effect. Yeah, from what I can tell, the one, four, and six, the ones with the shimmery finish, those have like a little bit of micro glitter in there. But other than that, I wanna say they look very similar. Like the base of them look very, very similar. And I can see that they're drying down. So let's see. A little bit is kind of coming off on my finger, but not too much. Wonderful, okay. I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to use. I'm gonna start with number two, which is copper. This is one of the satiny finish ones. And I'm gonna go straight onto my lid here, and I'm gonna start with my finger. And since this is a product that sets down, I'm just gonna go uh, one eye at a time. Well, these are behaving really, really nicely. Like I'm just kind of going back and forth with my finger and I don't feel like they're getting patchy. I don't feel like I'm picking up the product, you know? Um, I felt that way with the Chanel ones. Those did not work out for me. Those were really, really fussy. But these, yeah, these like went down really easily. I know it's hard to see this shade, so <laughs> let me go ahead and try uh, a different color. Let's go in with number five. Uh, bronze, which is uh, this shade here. So it's like a deeper brown. And let's apply that to the outer edge here. I may try it with a brush. Yeah, let's try it with a brush. See how that works. I've got my Worker 2 from Sonia G. Yeah, it seems to have blended out nicely, easily. Let me go ahead and apply a little bit more I wanna see how far I can uh, build these up. There, so there is shades two and five applied. Ooh, that's really pretty. I like how um, like blended out shade number five looks. It almost looks like a powder shadow. That's hard to achieve with a liquid eyeshadow too. Ooh, really nice. All right, let me try it on this eye. I do like, um, like if you want it in a specific area, the shade, I do like um, kind of working it in with the brush and then taking my finger to really kind of blend out the edges. Yeah, so I'm just getting the shadow where I want it. And then when it sets down a little bit and it starts to feel a little bit powdery, yeah, I like going in with my finger and working it out. I really like these shadows. Those were easy to use, again, unlike the Chanel ones, <laughs> which are not easy for me to use. But I feel like they, yeah, they like layered nicely. They apply with my fingers nicely. They apply with the brush nicely. I do like working the edges out with my finger. I feel like it gives it more of like a powdery blown outlook. Super easy. Ooh, 
Love that, really nice. I'll definitely have to try the other shades. Oh, maybe I can try the champagne right now, the lightest shade. Maybe I'll add some to my corner here. Yeah, that did a, a little something. Oh, really beautiful. And I'm so happy these worked well. I feel like liquid eyeshadows can be really, really hit or miss. So yeah, these worked out beautifully. Okay, let me just wipe off all these swatches and Ooh, let's get out that box from Hourglass because they have those new eyeliners. So we'll take a look at those. All right, so this is <laughs> what they sent over. I think they sent over every single shade, which is incredible. So the Phantom Volumizing Glossy Balm and then the Voyeur Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. So it comes in five shades. Looks like we have like a bronze, a plum, a brown, a black, and a deep green. <gasps> That's exciting. I think this is the first time a company has opted for a deep green versus a deep blue as part of like, you know, a core line of eyeliners. Wow, okay. Let me go ahead and unbox all of these and swatch these for you. All right, here are the five shades. So going from light to dark, we've got Solstice, Chestnut, Cave, Forest, and Obsidian. And the only shade that has a little bit of like metallic to it is the first shade, Solstice. The rest are just like a, you know, creamy flat color. So a little bit about the packaging. So these roll up and down. They're not uh, like the kind that you sharpen. And these swatched like really, really creamy. So uh, let's go ahead and of course, I'm really tempted by Solstice. You guys know how much I love like a metallic kind of brown shade. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply some of this right on top of my lid here, close to my lash line. So these are waterproof and a 12 hour smudge proof wear. So I'm just gonna use this worker two brush again and see if I can soften that line a little bit. Oh yeah. So it takes a bit for it to set down, which is nice. Really easy to apply. These just glide right on. Wow. I will say though, I'm partial to the pencils that you have to sharpen, even though it's kind of a pain to sharpen. Um, they tend not to dry out as quickly as these kinds that you just kind of roll up, but time will tell. Mm, that's really pretty. It goes really, really well <laughs> with the Sisley eyeshadows. Let me go ahead and see if I can smudge any of this. There's a little bit coming off on my finger, but, sorry, did you see that? A little bit coming off on my finger, but not too much. Yeah, oh, just a tiny bit. Nice. Okay, that was, what shade was that called? Solstice. Uh, let me go ahead and try Cave, like actually, in my waterline and my tight line. Let's see how easily it goes on in there. Easy enough. I don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, nice deep line. Let me blink a couple times. It's usually when it'll transfer or do funky things. No, my bottom lid seems clear. Wow, okay, so far so good. No transfer, which is great. All right, and then let's try one more color for my, oops, for my bottom, my lower waterline. Uh, shall we try forest, this green? Let's try this one. Yeah, it glides right onto the waterline, which is nice. Okay, so the green is in my waterline. Looks great, no smudging or anything. I think I'm going to skip mascara. Should I skip mascara? My thinking is if I put mascara on and that smudges, I won't know if it's the mascara or the eyeliner. Yeah, I think I'm gonna forego mascara because I wanna see if this eyeliner smudges. I'll know for sure that it's the eyeliner and not mascara. All right, um, well, these were wonderful. These were really, really great. Let's move on to the Volumizing Glossy Bombs. So it looks like there is eight new shades, instantly plumps, smooths, and conditions with a high shine finish. Okay, I didn't realize these were gonna be so <laughs> lightly pigmented, but starting uh, over here, we have Mist, Lucid, Thrill, 
slip, entice, trace. Sorry, this is very awkward. And then the last two is haze and lore. Sorry, here's haze. Here's haze and lore, the last two over here. So because these are so lightly pigmented, I feel like all of these lighter shades, it's just gonna end up being kind of personal preference. I'm gonna lip swatch all of these for you so you can see the difference, but like these are a little bit peachier. This one obviously is a little bit more pink. Um, and this one has a little bit more red in there. So they're just uh, slightly different, um, but I'm sure they're gonna look more different on the lips. So why don't I go ahead and start lip swatching, get these off my hands before I make a mess. So just a quick note about the packaging. So this is what it looks like. These are one of those like slender lipstick cases. And then this is one of those situations where you can raise the product, but you can't lower it. So it's got that clicky mechanism at the bottom. So if you do get these, just be careful not to like, you know, click up too much. But let me go ahead with mist. So this is what mist looks like in the bullet. So it looks like a very, very light peachy color. Really, really soft, soft formula. They remind me of the M Cosmetics ones are actually really, really similar in shape and everything like I think the M Cosmetics they also have like a clicky mechanism and they feel very similar they're just very juicy very moisturizing and like the actual formula of the stick is very very soft so you definitely don't want to lift up not even too much just like a little bit of it so there is mist so pretty here is lucid so we can see we're getting a little bit deeper but still very kind of bright peachy color so here is lucid are these minty? I think these are a little bit minty. It's funny, before I start filming, I always rinse my mouth out with like mouthwash, just, just to make sure we're all good to go. And sometimes I think it's my mouthwash, but then I'm like, is it the lip product? I think it's a lip product. I think there's a little bit of mintiness in here. It says it instantly plumps, which yeah, generally means there's a little bit of mintiness in there. I'm not the biggest fan of that because I find that mint over time actually dries out my lips like if I wear it all day, but this is such a moisturizing formula, I can't even imagine. But yeah, there's like a little bit of mintiness there. So that is Lucid. This one is Thrill. So this is the one that has like a, a reddish kind of tint to it. So here is Thrill. Next we have Slip, which is a little bit rosier. So here is Slip. I have to say, I really do like the way my lips look <laughs> with these on. They look really, really full. Here is Entice. This is like a pretty, like raspberry shade. Here is Trace, which is very nude. So there is Trace. Not a lot of the nude is actually showing on my lips. And next we have Haze. This has like a, like a terracotta, kind of burnt red. Uh, tone to it. And last but not least, we have Lore, which is like a blackberry shade. And there is Lore. Well, I really, really like the way these feel. I just wish they didn't have the mint. I'm just not the biggest fan of it, but I know some people love it. So there is a very, very, it's very slight. Like I said, I thought maybe it was my mouthwash. So that's how faint, <laughs> that's how faint it is. It's not like one of those burning your lips kind of mint additions. It's just very, very faint, but it is there. Um, so I do want to mention it. But anyway, that is all of the new makeup that I wanted to try. I think, I think these Sicily eyeshadows are such a winner. Look at how pretty they are. Really, really subtle. And like playing with those two shades, they played so well together. These hourglass eyeliners, incredible. I can't believe how easily they went on, how they smudged out really nicely that first shade that I used. And like nothing, nothing's going on. There's no transfer or anything, pretty much smudge proof. And the Tom Ford Sheer Cheek Duo I think is really lovely. The only thing I'm questioning <laughs> is this pie bronzer. I think I just have to figure out how to use it for me. Um, and also the Danessa Myricks. I think I'm just using it where I felt like I needed some smoothing out in terms of uh, texture, my larger pores here, and like this area where I normally get shiny. 
So far it's fine. Oh, and I put some down on my chin. So, so far, I, you know, I feel very comfortable using it in that way. I think I'm gonna have to play around with it and see how else I can use it, if I even wanna use it, um, you know, as a concealer, as a primer, or as a foundation even. Um, so I'll definitely get back to you guys on that one. Oh, and these um, highlighting drops, I think those turned out to be really, really pretty. I love this like subtle glow that I got. Yeah, so let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.